Hello everyone. Um, I'm Javier, and we are going to talk about the whys of hexagonal architecture. This is not exactly, I'm not going to talk about what's hexagonal architecture. Um, what we are going to do is trying to understand some of the whys of, 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 of that technique. Uh, and um, we do it, we are going to do it through coding at the end. So we are not going to take a look to a slide. You, it's, it's more taking a look to code, okay? <coughs> so what we are going to do is like to use one kata that probably you know, that's the rover, rover, rover kata, and we are going to do the hexagonal rover kata. Um, basically, if you don't know what's that, it's, um, it's simple. It's imagine that you, you are the rover Mars mission and you want to do something to allow the, the rover to move around Mars and face north, south, move, and so on. And we're going to do it through a REST API, something simple because we don't want to think too much. <laughs> this is like, if you want to take a look, this is the GitHub, it's public, you can download, do whatever you want with that. And let's go to see something. So <coughs> if, you, if you think, we are going to follow some design principles, simple design principles. Uh, one of them is like the last responsible moment. So we are going to try, I'm not going to follow hexagonal architecture and say I'm going to create the domain, the repositories, the use case, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is like going through the problem in small steps and trying to decide at the last responsible moment every time and yeah, finding questions and solutions. Can I do it bit bigger, I think? <laughs> Take a look. Better? Do you see something? Yeah? No? Much bigger? Something like this? Perfect. So let's start by the, I want to do something that's a RESTful API, no? So the first thing that I could do is like creating a test that shows that I'm running something, I have something running there. Uh, there is a port or something that I can s call some call and get a 404, for example. This is the this is a simple smoke test. I'm not doing too much. I'm just saying that I want to do a get over the root and getting a not found, nothing else. Simple, no? <coughs> um, this is, uh, you will say, this is a stupid. This is like a very simple thing. That's true, but also it's, it's allowing me to do, to, to have some code running because I, I'm, I, I need a main that's starting my, my Spring Boot application, no? That's the test what's doing. Okay, this is like the first step, simple. And what happens if, if we go a little di deeper in the problem? We could um, go to Git, select like the next problem to solve. That's a simple problem. It's like, okay, let's start with the with the with the Mars rover kata, and let's let's doing let's put the kata let, let's put the the Mars somewhere facing the north at one one in the in in the map. No, let's initialize the rover at that position. What should we do? We couldn't think about the API. I want to have like an initialize, a rest endpoint, I didn't think too much about that, a position and a direction, and when I do some gets, I will take the position and the direction that was set before in my initialize, <laughs> no? Super. So the simple thing that they can do to solve this problem probably is creating a controller that has these uh, endpoints, the initialize position and direction, without remembering anything and just setting like the JSONs that I want to retrieve. Super, that's, it's the same. I, I did a, a, a small increment. What I did was like, now I have the APIs defined. They are not doing too much, but they are defined. Great. If you think, take a look to my smoke, my test, it's like um, 
I'm setting in a position. The next thing that I could do should be like changing the position to be sure that they remember the position and to avoid the hard coding, no? That should be like the next step. <coughs> but let's think one moment about this. This integration test is like testing the controller, basically, no? If I put, I could, I could in the controller uh, define some variable or something that remember the, st the state of the, of the rover, no? Um, but if I do that, it's my controller just a controller, or it's more things, doing more things. It's applying, are, are, am I applying the single responsibility principle of solid? If the, if the controller is remembering the position of the rover. Um, this is one of those points in which we have to think, do we want that? Do, do I want to have everything mixed in the controller, my logic with my infrastructure, everything mixed there, and all my logic tested through this integration test? In my opinion, you, what's that? That's coupling. And coupling is against, is against change. If you, if you have something very coupled, it's difficult to change things, no? Imagine that, what happens if I want to change this and not be in a REST API? I want to do it by FTP, I don't know. <laughs> it's a stupid thing, perhaps, but why not? Perhaps it's a better approach. Okay, so this is, let's go to, to that point, no? If I have this, I would say that I prefer to move that moment to the future, deciding in the future what I'm going to do with uh, how am I going to remember the direction and all that stuff, yeah? So what means that in, fa in fact? It means that I could create a collaborator that could solve this, could remember the status of the, of the rover and uh, have the functionality to change the, 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 the position, direction, all that stuff, initialize, all that stuff, no? Super. But I don't know what I'm, what I'm going to do. So what's the best tool I can have to know, to move this to the future? Mocking. I can mock. And if I don't want to decide anything, I can create an interface. So here, the Mars rover controller now contains an interface as a collaborator does the Mars rover use case. I don't know if you see this. Super. So this is one of these points at which, w what are we doing in fact? We are applying one of the, the design principles of solid, no? What's this principle? Dependency inversion principle. The abstract class should not know details about the specific class. I put, uh, I put a border between infrastructure and domain. Now, the use case is my domain. It's part of, of the, second, the second layer of my code, no? Great. And yeah, why not making that to be like the, the um, to, to make it more explicit. Why not putting domain and infrastructure as different packages and being able to, to start thinking on both things separately? Why is this a good idea? Perhaps because I can reuse the domain as much as I want. It's, it's not dependent of the infrastructure, no? Could be a good idea, start thinking on moving outside. I, I tried to do it because I thought it was a good idea in that moment. Okay, and, but also if you see, in my Mars rover controller, I'm using some classes, the position, position direction, and all that stuff, and my use case are using the same classes, no? If I want to split the domain to the infrastructure, if, I, if I'm using exactly the same classes, what's going to happen if the, if the, structu if the structure of your um, JSON change, your domain will change. What's that? Coupling again. We are coupling between domain and infrastructure. 
So um, we could think about that. Okay, here what we did it was in the use case trying to change both both um, trying to have different classes for different uh, parts. The direction in the Mars Rovers use case is split from the position that was before. Let's go to the next one. Here is another point that we were talking before. The point is like um, we changed the infrastructure JSON, and now instead of X and Ys, we are going to use lang, lat, and long. Okay. Doing that, I'm if I'm using the same classes for the JSON and for the, my domain, I have to change. It's, it's like the same, so I'm changing everything. I'm changing all my domain logic will be changed because of this change. That's accidental. It's not something that depends on the business that we are trying to solve, no? It's another thing. It's not an abstract problem. It's something related to one of the technologies I've decided to use. In this case, REST. Okay, to solve that, what you can do is like, yeah, having duplicate classes, you could say, yeah, duplicate classes is a bad idea. Not so bad. By now, seems bad, by now, in, in this specific moment, but in the future, is this is going to allow me to put logic inside the domain classes without adding that logic to the infrastructure classes. So my JSONs are not going to have methods to solve some kind of problems in, in my domain. My domain will have, no? This is a way of fighting against uh, anemic models. When we are talking about anemic models, we are talking about those kind of things. This allows us to move the logic inside the domain objects. <laughs> Super. So at this point, we have duplicated. OK. Sometimes to, s to go in a direction, you have to create a small problems. They are small. They are not so big. The record position is not so bad to have it duplicated. It's not so big. You, we have very few elements, and we have position direction also there. The infrastructure has JSON direction, land long, that they are like the things that we were talking before that change because of the JSON changes. OK, let, let's continue a little with, with our, our problem. We were, we were talking just in the infrastructure before about having um, in initialized the the position and direction and all that stuff. But yeah, the rover needs to move. So to move, I need to do something to create some 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 endpoints to have some rest uh, resources, no? We are going to do this through the in this second test that's the move rover. The move rover is like initializing the rover at 00, zero north and um, we are going to move forward, backward, and we are going to rotate right and rotate left, and we are expecting to finalize having the rover at north, and yeah, we are going to verify that our mock, the use case, that we still didn't implement, has been called with those commands, yeah? Super. That's forcing us something interesting. It's forcing us to create those those methods, the move, inside the inside the interface. Here, I have this move method. That's there. So I'm adding more logic to my use case, following the 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 problem, without implementing the logic inside the rover. I'm just talking about the controller. No, this is just an interface. I just define the API. I'm just thinking about what the user needs, not about how to do it. Yeah? Perfect. Uh, let's continue. And yeah, this is the same. We have like 
Mm, we have added the forward and backward to the commands, so we have uh, more options to to call like the the method, the, the use case. Okay, let, let's see something that's that's here now. In the domain, now we have implemented the use case. If we go, I, c I can try to go to the Mars rover. Okay, we have implemented the the Mars rover. That's my use case. I'm focused on that now. And what's the difference? Now, I can test this through unit test. Why? Because Unit tests, if you think about that, uh, are tests that don't depend at all on, on infrastructure. If I'm able to split my domain from my infrastructure, all my domain can be tested through unit test. Yeah? Is th that, that's right, no? So, and why is that good? Why, why is that a good decision? This is an architectural decision. This is related to the test pyramid. If I have a lot of unit tests, I need to allow my code to have a lot of unit tests. That's not by default. You are not gaining that because you want to try. You need to have classes that doesn't depend on infrastructure to have unit tests, no? And why is that interesting? Because unit tests are faster. They are a lot, much more faster than integration tests. If you have tons of integration tests, what's going to it's going to affect your pipelines. It's going to affect your building time in your local machine. And that's not so good. But if you have unit tests, you can multiply unit tests by 10, and the, rest, and the time of the build is going to change from 10 seconds to 12 seconds. Try to do that with integration tests. Super hard. <coughs> and we have this. Another another interesting idea here is like, okay, if I have um, my domain separated from infrastructure, if and if I decide to test just my use cases like that one, that's the entry point of my business logic. No, I'm doing, I'm testing not every class, but my behavior, and that's allowing me to refactor inside my behavior. Because probably you know, or you have been affected by this, but if you try to test every class of your domain, you will probably have a lot of problems refactoring later. Oh, okay, sorry. It's other me. Ah, está encendido, pero... Okay, ya está. Great, so... This is like the, the second, and, and here I solve this, so I, I have a, a unit test for this. This is my unit test, so I can test it. It's not Spring Boot, it's not related to integration tests. Everything is in memory, and I'm just running and trying to check that the things are working in the correct way. Super. What's, what's the next thing that we should do, or we should think? It's about, yeah, to solve this, to solve this, this test that I created that's moving around, and I have to remember like the previous status of the, of the Mars rover. I have to remember the position, the that. I, I just use a global body, an attribute, sorry, in the use case. Here, sorry, not here. Here, I have just the position direction. It's the simple thing that I can do. I don't want to take hard decision at that moment. I want to iterate faster. That's another th interesting thing of unit tests, no? that you can iterate faster over them and having feedback. And I solve it with a simple in-memory attribute. But probably that's not enough to go to broad, because what's happen if, if in the Mars rover my batteries are down, but I need to know where I was before. No? I need some kind of persistence. I need to save it. So this is just to iterate, just to have the logic, but the, the business logic is going to be the same. No, It doesn't matter if I have it in memory or if I have it in a database. Yeah? Okay. So um, So 
So let, let's introduce one of the things of, of um, hexagonal architecture, no? That's the repository. What's the repository? Is this, is this interface that's helping me to uh, avoid trying to go to the detail of how it's going to be persisted or how it's going to, how, where, how am I going to retrieve the data? And this is the same principle than the use case that we were doing before. I can create an interface and mock it that interface. No? In this case, we are going to do a little different thing. Instead of mocking, we are going to stab it. <laughs> so no, we are going, I'm going to create a fake, a real implementation of the interface only valid for my test. And that's going to give me, um, if I go here, I'm going to create an in-memory position director repository. That's the same thing that I did before, and that's why everything is working and I'm not taking too much risks. Moving the position direction to this attribute in this class instead of having it in the use case, in my implementation of the use case. Okay, now I have one. All my tests are going to pass because it's the same, it's the same logic, but also if I want to create a new interface, I have a good way of checking that my new implementation of this repository behaves the same than this one. And what's that? That's contract testing, no? I can define a test that could be applied for any of the implementation of my interface, and all of them needs to be the same. So I'm pretty sure if my test used this implementation that's in memory, database and <laughs> I create a contract test that all the implementations of that interface needs to pass, what I'm saying basically is like everything is going to work with my, with my real database because it's working the unit test and my, my contract test force everyone to behave the same than the, than the implementation in memory that we have here. Okay, so this is interesting because I could go to the next step. I could decide, okay, now that I have a way to, to be sure that my implementation is behaving exactly the same than my repository in memory for this case, I could try to implement the JPA database, no? What I did. Okay, here, here we have like the contract test. What's the contract test? Is this, um, is this class? Uh, let's, let's go. Sorry. difficult to use it. Okay, so here, that's my contract test. It's an abstract class. It's an abstract, it's an abstract class where I have my test, one test for each of the behaviors that I want to have, save and retrieve one position direction, save and retrieve another position direction, and I just have created the method, that's the pr protected abstract method, that all the implementations of my, my interface needs to extend to know how to create this position direction repository. In the case of the in-memory, I will have there an in-memory repository. In the case of the JPA, I will have a real JPA repository. And this is the one that's allowing me to be sure that both things are exactly the same. This one, for example, you can see. This is the implementation, and if I run this test, I'm going to run all the tests defined in, in the upper class. Super. Let's go and continue with the... So now I'm ready to, to create my JPA implementation. And here you will see that I have a new JPA integration test that's using a Spring Boot, doing whatever you want, and returning that one for the upper class. With this, I'm pretty sure that the that both things are exactly the same. So 
if you think about that, what we have done is like um, delaying the decision of what I want to use. In this case, I'm using um, uh, what I'm using. I don't remember. Sorry. Um, I'm using an, a simple implementation in memory of the of a database, a SQL lead, and for for the real world, I'm using that. But I could use Oracle, MySQL, whatever. It's not a question. Sometimes people think that the that external architecture is trying to say you, hey, what's happen if you change the database? It's not like that. It's more like, how are you going to do things in a way to obtain feed, early feedback? without going through all the details. Do I have to select the database at the very beginning of when I'm starting a problem? No. This is what is allowing you hexagonal an architecture at, least at, at the end. Do you need to finish the whole algorithm because of the mass of moving, all that logic, all the, bus all the, all the rules that I want to have there before having a controller? No. You can start and split the things, put in the borders, those borders are the um, entry points to your domain and the secondary ports of your repositories. And yeah, and at the end, what you have is like something following these simple rules, TDD outside in, trying to put borders, mocking to design, um, using solid principles, you achieve something very similar to hexagonal architecture without knowing what's what it was hexagonal architecture. And yeah, that's all. This is my presentation. <laughs> um, do you have some questions or is it clear? <laughs> you want to go home? <laughs> yeah. You? Okay, sorry. Hello, and thank you for the great presentation. That was super dynamic. And uh, I was, uh, at, the, at the first I was, you know, not very happy that it will be code, but now I'm very happy it was code. Uh, thank you. <laughs> really great. So uh, my question is, you were, you were going through the solid principles and going through the uh, building abstractions and everything. Uh, would you say that you have to apply all of the four uh, parts of the hexagonal architecture when you are coding, or there are things which you say are more recommended or less recommended when building software? Uh, it's it's basically I think uh, Boitzik, sorry, it's, it's your name more or less. Yeah, thank you. It was saying before. At the end, it's a question of hexagonal architecture has any kind of of reasoning when you have a domain. Okay, if you are doing a crude, why are you going to introduce hexagonal architecture? It has no much sense. You need business logic. You need something that's important for you to maintain. If it's not so important and it's easy, perhaps it's too hard, too, too hard to use hexagonal architecture. What's important is more like thinking about what's an interface. What's trying to, to do an interface? An interface is a behavior that you want to abstract and the solid principles are things that you have to evaluate no sometimes is you could say um, um, the single responsibility okay the single responsibility if I have two it's not so bad no or the open close principles the open close principle is if I have two and I'm not going if this didn't change for years it's not so important no if, if you have three and you, are, and you think that's going to, to happen again, it's a good time to refactor. This is like the point. You can have a small, at the end of the code, if you think about how this technical debt is everywhere, you cannot avoid technical debt. You have to live with technical debt. You have to refactor when you, when you need it. At that point, in the last responsible moment, what we were doing, when you have a problem and you, you, you see that you are coupled and you want to solve that. At that moment, refactor and apply the principle that's helping you to solve a, a problem. So you would recommend applying common sense when deciding whether to go? I don't like common sense. <laughs> I, I just recommend applying the same principles. 
when you have a problem. A, 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 a problem that's not so big, but is not so small. At, at that moment, you have to apply these principles. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah, too bad. Sorry. There are one people here. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I will check the code later. Too bad. But um, I'm just curious. There are some people that just start from the upside of the hexagonal uh, architecture. Uh, what do you think, um, based on your experience, if is it better to start from the core domain to the outside, or just start from the outside, or it doesn't matter? I, I, I have a, I have an opinion here. Sorry. Okay. For that. <laughs> <laughs> so in my opinion, it's always better to do um, design uh, top-down design than than uh, I don't know down up. I don't know how to say that. Bottom up, yeah, bottom up. Sorry. Why? Because you are closer to the user. So, and and that's it's in my opinion. Sometimes we think too much about the design of the database, and which are the tables, but that's that's making you to force like uh, things in the middle just because you didn't start at the top. That's the only one that's important. No, who is important? The client. What's the data that is coming from there? So start at the higher level that you can. Uh, it, that's my opinion. Okay, thank you. Any more? Okay, I can see. Thank you so much for the talk. Uh, I would have a question regarding, um, so for small code bases, would you say that it makes sense to start with the layers and with the hexagonal or clean architecture, or rather um, take more an iterative approach and you know start building those layers whenever you need them. Thank you. Um, I like to do evolutionary architecture, so being able to change at the moment that you have to change. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, it's 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 a question of knowledge. No, if you know that this is going to be complex and super, you will have a big domain. You, you, if you have that in mind and it's true, go directly. But if not, that's probably majority of cases. Try to evolve evolve your code with a small user stories, with a small what we did, with a small steps in, in you, if you like to do TDD, I like TDD, so it's easy for me to follow that approach. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, really good, man. <laughs> really good, I really love the code. Uh, there are two questions, may I do two questions? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry everyone. So. My main question, I think, is a question that I have already hear before a lot. So there are like these three, I think maybe more, uh, kind of architectures that are based on the same concepts. You have the onion architecture, the hexagonal architecture, the clean architecture. Do you think that there are main difference between them or we can just go with one and that's it? Yeah, it's the same concepts. The point is like, I agree with you, they are practically the same, they follow the same principles, it's the same than this. There is a great talk uh, of Jay Berensberger that's talk, and uh, that's called something about the best guide of mocking objects or something like that, that's talking about universal architecture, and I prefer that name than the other one, nice. because I think it's more or less like the same. What I'm saying is that I don't, in, if you see this, I don't like recipes. I just want to know. I know that's one option I have. I, I prefer to evolve to that option knowing that I have it. We could, uh, I don't know, we could, in, we could put here much things. No, we could say, we could explain trying to do CQ, CQRS and much more stuff. We don't want to over engineer. Yeah. So if you try to design the last responsible moment at every time and you have a design that can be changed easily, that software, software is something that can that should change easily. Um, I'm able to follow the path and find my own path, taking this into account, other things. But if we go directly through one direction, what happens if you fail? What are you going to do? It's technical debt. You will pay for that, no? So yeah, in in some senses, it's more like trying to to learn and see what's best applies in each moment. 
Perfect. And my second question may be sound difficult. Uh, my main role is a front-end architect, so I have to ask, I, um, what's your opinion about this I'm going to say? It's possible to implement clean architecture in something like, for example, front-end, that front-end inside yeah. the clean architecture is something abstract that should be there. <laughs> you can, you can do it. And you have a lot of, uh, I like React. I'm yeah. doing React for a long time. and. I love React testing library, for example, if you see. Those are integration tests. Yeah. But the logic that you have in your, co in, your, in your components could be there or in another file, no? And what's the difference? If you, you have an interface, it doesn't matter. I told about interface of Java, but I was saying that it was behaviors. You can have behaviors with, with any, any function that you want. It's a question of, you can mock it. You have tools to do that. There is no problem at all to do that. And I think it's going. It's it's funny because in in front end we are always thinking about that, and front end is one of the places that change the technology more frequently. So it, it's one of the places that has more sense to use things that decouple you your domain from your your infrastructure. It's true that a lot of people, Java people or backend people, I'm my backend also, and I'm guilty of this. We always say no, no, the front end doesn't have logic. That's that's false right now, completely false. It has a lot of logic, a lot. So why not apply in this? The, sorry, that, that's all. I, I, I talk a lot. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, man. All right. So I think that's oh, okay. The last one, okay. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I'm, but my question is, uh, for example, that uh, the old the repositories and the solid principles is the worst if you're beginning from the, the good principles, is the, if you started the project from the, uh, the good principles. But for example, if you came to the new company and uh, if you see the code, there is no principles, <laughs> nothing, they are not using nothing. That, for example, they're using that SQL role uh, for uh, trying to inject OREM somewhere. There is no security. How you came uh, to start to make the more refactoring and explain that your manager explain is needed for, like, for, for example, for creating the new features, uh, or you pay maybe two times, like two times more at the time and the money for uh, adding some the new features. In this case, uh, the Solidia works in the, in the from the beginning. It's good. It sounds good. Yeah, but uh, you came to the no, no company. It, it's not that. For example, that not following. It's an interesting question, but it's uh, probably. Refactoring, that's refactoring. Refactoring is maintaining the behavior, the current behavior, changing the, the structure. How to start refactoring, that's the point. How to pay the debt, no? Yeah, yeah. That's the point. Um, there is a problem in companies. If you are in a company that you all, they only think of feature, 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 um, you are going to always have debt. At some point, you have to start managing debt. What means managing debt, in my opinion, in my experience? If you try to talk with your manager, with your product owner, whatever you have, I don't know, it doesn't matter. They are not going to buy anything of those things because there is no ba no money there. What, I, what I'm saying there, this is going to behave the same. I'm lasting a long time. He's saying, okay, it doesn't matter, it's not important. Any feature that gives you one dollar, it's better. So you are not going, so this, you have to change the point. It's not a question that I have to. It's not a question that I have to ask for permission to do to do refactoring. I have to do it all the time. In a, every feature that I, I, I was, we were talking on the last responsible moment. You start one thing, one feature, and you see that the code is impossible. You have to refactor. How big is your refactor? You have to measure that. I don't know. It's a percentage of the time needs to to be refactoring of that feature. That's the. Boy Scout rule, no? At the end, is that the rule? But if you have so many tech debt that you cannot have, you cannot solve everything in in that way, one thing I, I like to use is having a budget of time. So at the week, one person of the team is in charge of doing tech debt. If you achieve that, you have like the the resources to solve the problem. Yeah, it's, cool. That's my opinion, my yeah. experience. There is a great book. There is a great, not a great book. There is uh, the Batman role. If you if you try to find it in internet, the Batman role, by it's super difficult. The name of the of the it's a blog. Gojo Ansik, probably you know who is. 
it's explaining how to manage tech debt following this approach, uh, a budget of time. Thank you. All right, so thank you very much.